It is almost a year after the novel coronavirus was discovered in Wuhan, China. The deaths globally has surpassed 1.6 million. In Nigeria, the deaths have exceeded 1,000, was close to 100,000 confirmed cases as at the time of this report. Now, sadly, the disease did not only claim lowly and downtrodden, it also took away the high and the mighty. Plus, TV Africa's Adebanke Oduni takes a look on the list of notable figures in Nigeria and the attempt to convince many doubting Thomases on the existence of the virus. The first and if not the biggest casualty is the former chief of staff to President Muhammadu Buhari, Abba Kiari, who died on the 17th of April 2020 due to COVID-19 complications. Not only that, there was an attempt to shroud his status. His location was linked to controversy. But finally, his death and subsequent breach of protocols during his burial threw up the controversy on the deadliness of the virus. On the 25th of June, former governor of Oyo State, Abiola Ajimobi, also succumbed to complications from COVID-19. He died after spending several weeks in intensive care. His demise was not without denials and controversies. Another notable figure's death was Buruji Kashamu, who passed on on the 8th of August, 2020 from COVID-19 at the first cardiology consultant, Lagos. On the 15th of June, Senator Adebayo Oshinowo, popularly known as Peperito, died of complications from the novel virus. Until his passing, the 64-year-old served as a first-term senator from Lagos East Senatorial District. Apart from the political scene, some notable figures among the frontline workers also died from COVID-19 complications, some of which include Emeka Chuk who was the first doctor in Nigeria to die from the virus. He died on the 16th of April after contracting the virus from one of his patients. In the media industry, Dan Foster, a radio personality, died on the 17th of June 2020. He passed a day after being confirmed positive of his carrying the virus. The chief judge of Kogi State, Nasiu Ajano, passed on on the 28th of June. Despite these notable personalities whose cause of death are in the public space, are Nigerians convinced that it is not a hoax? The death of notable people um, who died from COVID-19 virus should be an indication of the uh, return of the second wave of COVID-19. And, and it is important that um, people begin to look around them and, and see that this um, pandemic is not a joke. Uh, unfortunately, um, we are now seeing higher numbers than we normally would see um, regarding COVID-19. And uh, people need to begin to adhere to the living with COVID protocols that the Lagos State government has listed out. And so it's important that, you know, we, we consider the uh, opportunities that have been listed out by Lagos State through the Ecotelimed platform and also through the isolation centers and the testing strategy which is totally free. Many Nigerians um, have not been able to understand clearly what the COVID pandemic really is. We have lost many notable Nigerians. It's important to understand that this thing is not is, is around. Now there's a new variant of it in Nigeria now killing people. Um, more, 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 and it's deadlier. For the pandemic nature of the disease, experts say they may have sought medical care outside the shores of the country. With this reality on the first-hand experience with our decaying health system, is it time to pay more attention to our healthcare system? As at the time of filing this report, Nigeria is entering a second wave and any precautionary step won't be too much to observe according to experts. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Odunui. We are now being joined by public health practitioner Dr. Tui Mebawondu and Dr. Bernard Fatui, medical practitioner. Uh, good evening to you, doctors. Uh, let us start with you, Dr. T. Indeed, Nigeria also got its own share of deaths arising from COVID-19, including prominent Nigerians and politicians. Uh, bearing that in mind, why do you think people are outwardly disobeying COVID-19 protocols? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, you are asking about how uh, we are fair with COVID-19 in Nigeria. Uh, 
Okay, Dr. Bernard, if you can hear me, we'll try and reconnect with uh, Dr. Chi. Uh, bearing in mind all the deaths that have been recorded in Nigeria, why do you really think uh, Nigerians are outrightly disobeying COVID-19 protocols? All right, um, thanks for having me. Um, you, like you said, it's why you were reading the news initially. I want to say or reiterate what you just said. What, what is happening basically like it seems that we're suffering from uh, doubting some form of syndrome, so to say, uh, a case where people find it difficult to believe. Yes, um, notably names, a lot of them, politicians, elite, and all that. But uh, the truth is, until you become one on the street, or having someone on the street, someone in his family does, you understand, then it becomes a bit difficult. So, uh, in a way, also, I can understand from the perspective of a lot of Nigerians uh, that find it what to do. Um, basically, this, of course, is um, um, strengthened by the mistrust between government and people. Uh, we saw that also play out during the NSAS crisis and all that. And so it's even more now difficult to even make people believe whatever the government is saying. A lot needs to be done in that regard in order to gain people's trust. Um, but let's go into, okay, what are the more, in quote, scientific uh, reasons why it's uh, a bit difficult for us, for us to really see this or believe that it's really with us. To start with, um, with the available data that we have, and of which we don't have so much of that, um, if we look at the case fatality rate, the case fatality rate basically refers to um, how many people are dying in comparison to how many confirmed cases you have. So we have a general worldwide, uh, worldwide case fatality ratio of about 2.2%, and Nigeria we have about 1.6%, based on available data, based on what we're testing. So what it tells you basically that, I mean, on paper is that maybe we're not having enough, we're not having mortality uh, compared with what is happening in other countries. So that's a factor. But another factor we might want to also look into is the fact that, um, uh, let's talk about access to health. Before we can begin to say, oh, someone was tested for COVID-19 uh, and was confirmed or that he died of COVID-19, you need to have had access to health. Yes, we know that quite a lot is being done in terms of community testing, but not a lot enough. Let's, let's be realistic. Mm. So a large extent also, the testing has been commercialized as it stands. So it means that the common man on the street that has um, the symptoms, cough and all that on the street, is not likely to go to any test center to be able to get tested. All right, Dr. Yes, Bennett, we'll get, uh, get back to you again. Uh, but let's try and reconnect uh, with Dr. Tui Meba Wondo. Okay, so let's look at the public health in perspective right now. What are the lessons to be learned as regards Nigeria's public health system, and what can we do to improve on it, Dr. Tui? Um, the COVID-19 infection offers us a huge opportunity, first and foremost, to gather data, to, to replan our public health system and, and um, stimulate a, an adequate response to any health emergency. But what we have done is this, is to push further what I would call the politics of COVID-19 and neglect the science of COVID-19. Now, and the politics of COVID-19 is mainly responsible for the disobedience, for the doubts, for the mistrust that the people have placed on every campaign the government is trying to push forward. Now, we, I hope we have learned the lesson. If we've learned the lesson, we should be able to now have critical data on what is the number of, the number of Nigerians, the access to health, the quality of health, the funding of health, and able to use that to stimulate even social stimulus or social, you know, impact interventions in different parts of Nigeria. We should be able to have the dynamics of population and then use that to do further planning. But as it is now, I, I doubt whether we we'll really learn serious lessons with, with this COVID-19. What we have seen is this, that people have increased their magical people, not on my doorstep, it's not my portion, I don't know anything about it. Why is this? Because even government themselves are 
active violators of the COVID-19 prevention uh, methods. Yeah. Now, if you look at where, where, where the places that have been shot in recent time in Lagos, for instance, you see that it's a high and mighty that patronize the place. If you look at the bus system in Lagos, nobody wear masks and nobody cheers. If you look at the market, nothing is happening. So people just wake up and feel that, listen, you guys are using it to make money. You are taking the money in your pocket. You want us to die. And because government is not responding appropriately in terms of stimulating the economy, in terms, in terms of dispensing the palliatives. Okay, Dr. T. Doubts then crept up, and we seems we are not learning much. All right, thank you for your thoughts now, Dr. T. Uh, let's get back to Dr. Bennett for a bit as we begin to round off on this segment. Uh, let's talk a bit about the new variant of the virus. What do we need to know as regards symptoms, and how can we stop a full-blown spread in Nigeria? Okay, so um, we know that generally for COVID-19, we still have we still an evolving area. Uh, we're still getting to know more, more, more about it in terms of long-term effect and all that. Uh, but we're still grappling with uh, COVID-19, and now we're having cousins of COVID-19 coming in. So we have a strain, new strain coming up in the UK. We have another strain that was uh, noticed in South Africa, and of course, Nigeria. But, uh, well, the good side to it, so to say, based on the data available is that it doesn't appear that the current uh, strains um, have more fatality rates. However, they seem to have that capacity to transmit faster than uh, the previous strain. Mm -hmm. So that's it as far as we know for now. Um, also, what we know is that with the current um, make, uh, current um, protocols, hand washing, face masks and all that, you can also, we can do the same to uh, eliminate the, the new strain. All right, thank you, Dr. Fatih. Uh, very quickly, Dr. T, in 30 seconds. Now, let's get reactions concerning our talks about fake COVID-19 result certificate on sale in Lagos. What are your concerns? Really, really troubling. But we be, be dubious about everything. We say, when we have doubts, when we have lies, when we have misinformation, as far as public health is concerned, that will do more damage than the virus itself. I am aware that there's been a, a cartel selling fake COVID-19 results in, in, in Lagos. It's the, that's why this is a difficulty to the mistrust we have in the health system and in governance. Oh. So again, I think government needs to stand up and assure that integrity of health system, integrity of laboratory system, integrity of what we discussed out in terms of prevention is oh. adhered to strictly. Right. So it, it, it is a bad signal, very bad signal. We need to address it quickly. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we are completely pressed for time now. We must say a very big thank you to Dr. Atuyu Mebawanda, public health practitioner, and Dr. Bennett Fatu for joining us on the news tonight. We do appreciate your input. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.